Hello everybody. Today I am making a mid-sized wall hanging using lots of different cords and also some beads. And don't worry that large scale wall hanging is coming. I just haven't found the perfect piece of driftwood yet, but it is definitely coming in the next few weeks. So let's get into the supplies for today. Starting with my dowel, which is this 90 centimeter. You've seen me use this one a couple times already. And for the cords today, I have four different ones. First, the base kind of cord is this five millimeter sand colored single twist cord. That's going to make most of the knots and most of the color that you will see in the wall hanging. And then I have that same color, but in one and a half millimeter size. And that's because of the beads that I'm using, which have a very tiny hole. So I wouldn't be able to squeeze through anything bigger than that one and a half millimeter. But obviously if you're not using the beads or using different size, you can just work with the five millimeter for those cords as well. And then I have two three ply cords terracotta and sunset both of these like reddish orange ish tones and as you can see i only have smaller spools because i've already used both of them on previous projects and i chose those two accent colors because of the beads the beads are this uh variation of different like or ornaments on them i don't know different patterns but also in these like sand and and reddish orange ish tones so i think that will go really well with the two colors i have chosen and for those of you that are new to my channel all the cord lengths and measurements you can find down in the description of the video so those were the cords and then in terms of other tools i'll definitely be using my brush because i want to have a nice fluffy fringe at the end and again because of the beads i will be using this special needle that has this big hole in the middle again because of those beads that have very tiny hole in the middle i will need this to pull the cords through and i think that's everything i will need today so let's get started so i'll be starting with the middle section that's going to have all the beads on it and i am starting with putting just one cord with the regular Lark's head knot here. On one side, it can be really quite short, but the other needs to be really long because we will then do multiple kind of back and forth here. I did make a little mark here to know where the middle is, but I'm not going to worry too much about it just yet. And so I'm just making my first Lark's head knot here. And again, not worrying too much about where exactly this is placed. I might then move it uh, back and forth once I put the beads on it. Now the beads, I've prepared them like this. This is the general idea of how they will be laid out to help me see how big each of the half circles is going to be. And so now I'll be taking this entire first row and putting it on that long piece of cord. So I'm taking the end of this long string, I put it through the needle, kind of pull it to the end, and then I take the bead, and at this point when I need to pull it through, I'm actually using my gardening gloves to not burn my fingers because the needle is a little bit, um, I don't know, I guess because it's so thin, I could really hurt myself doing that, so. And then obviously like once I get into it, I will be putting more beads at the same time on onto the needle and through onto the cords. And yeah, so this is how I'm going to do the entire first row. So I've put up all these beads and I measured to make sure that from here to here, it is the same distance as from here to where I am about to make the second Lark's head knot. So first, this long cord needs to go over the dowel like so. Then I will tighten them, tighten the cord. Again, I can then move it later to make sure it, um, it fits. And then the next move is to go behind the dowel and I'm grabbing that cord 
and pulling it through that loop, which then makes another lark's head knot. And now the idea is I'll put the second row of beads on this cord here, then again make another lark's head knot here, and then the third row is gonna be hanging like so right here. Now, of course, we've got these two ends here. And so what I think I want to do is just take my hot glue gun and glue them to the back of the dowel like this and then just cut them short so they won't be visible at all. But I think I'll wait with that um, for later just in case I would want to like shorten or extend these um, strings of beads after I add the other sections. Now that the beads are on, I can start on the second part where I'm going to be using those colored cords. And I take an inspiration from Grey Wonders again. Thank you so much. She had this knot in one of her, I think, variations on the square knot. And I think according to her video, she called it the caged Solomon bar. So let me show you how that's going to work. And basically this is going to be like a, a braid sort of that's going to hang here and connect in the middle. So we will do the same thing on both sides. So here I've got two cords, one sunset, one the terracotta, and I'm going to put both of them on the dowel with the lark's head knot, kind of forming just one lark's head knot. Just making sure that the cords are in the right order. So I ended up with the sunset being on the outside and the terracotta on the inside here. And now I'm going to start as if making a, a regular square knot. So I usually start them going this way. So that's the first regular half. But before making the other one, which would be going this way like this, I need to wrap this cord around this one, going behind it and then back to the middle. And only then I'm making that second half of the square knot. And then when you tighten it, you will see how it's creating this little, um, I don't know what you call it. You can just see the middle cord much more like this. And then that's how you do from here every single knot. So now the second one would be going like this, but before we do that, we're going to wrap the left cord around it and only then we make that half of the square knot. and tighten. And like this, we will keep going the whole way. I think it will take some time to get used to the tightening because it is a little bit different than, yeah, what I'm used to, but I'm sure I'll get the hang of it. Okay, yeah, I think it is best if you first, once you make the knot, that you first tighten just the outside cords and only then you bring the inside ones in. Whereas normally I would kind of tighten them simultaneously, but that's kind of screwing up the design here. So I'm not completely done yet, but I'm more or less close to where I want the two ends to meet in the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the second part. And I realized I forgot to mention before, every time I'm working with three ply cords, long ones, I make sure to tape the ends so that they don't start unraveling from the bottom. So I'll go ahead and do the exact same thing on the opposite side. So I made sure that the terracotta color is in the middle, just like here. However, for that very first knot, I want to make sure that these two are opposite each other. So here, we started with the left cord. So on this side, I'll start with the right cord 
going over the two in the middle first. And then after that, it is going to be the exact same thing as we did here. So I've gotten both of the sides to a point where I think I want to connect them, but you know I like my hair accessories, so first I'm just clipping them together like this, and I will finish them off completely only once I'm done with that last part on the side. And I think actually this is going to be my main tip today. Something that I'm finding is when I'm working on these like layered pieces, it's always best to leave the like last finishing touches of each of the sections till the end or at least till like the, the latest it's possible to finish it just in case you want to make some ad ad adjustments as you're moving forward with the other layers. Okay, and so for that last part, we're going to be adding five of those sand cords and making like the typical diamond pattern that's going to connect down here. Now that all the cords are up, I will be making that diamond right here with these two cords as my travel cords and then always on each side, the four cords on there. And I am using my fast um, method of making the double half hitches where I put all these cords on my hand, make the loop on my hand, pull the travel cord through, and then tighten all of these cords. I'm putting a link up there to a video where I actually show you this in a much slower uh, motion and I explain how I do this, but it really makes things a lot easier when working with these long cords. And you can see in this first part very clearly how making this side a lot shorter than this side, that's to then help with that kind of wave once we want to connect these two sides together. And so now taking the same travel cords and then again putting on four double half hitches from these cords. Once I get to this crossing place, I'm keeping this cord as my travel cord and I'll add one more double half hitch from this cord, which was previously the travel one, onto this side and tighten them together. And at this point, I just repeat. So again, these two cords become the travel ones and I make more diamonds. I'm done with the diamonds on both sides. I made eight. And just a couple of things that I always mention whenever I'm making these patterns, one, making sure that they are opposite reflections, which shows especially in these crossings. So it's always, the top cord is always the one that's going inward. And then when it comes to the tension, because eventually we will be connecting these two down here, I always make sure that the cords on this side are a little bit tighter than this side, or you know, the, the inside is a bit tighter than the outside. And I do that simply by holding the travel cords in the right direction. So if I want them more tight, I'll hold the cord more closer to that top row and only then tighten the knots. Whereas on this side, I might be holding it more like this, I hope. I hope you can see you know, the, the difference of, of the, the travel cords then. And then you tighten the double half hitch knots, which then puts them in a certain place on the inside shorter, on the outside a bit longer. And last thing that I myself have forgotten a little bit about this time is making sure that on the two sides, the, the lengths are the same so that the diamonds do come to the same place in the end so that when you connect them, that connection is really in the middle. So what happened to me is I, when I was doing these ones, I made them a little bit more um, longer. The, the diamonds were a bit longer. So in the end, when I put them together, it was something like this. So this side was a lot longer than this side. So I had to go back, undo the last three and make them a little bit um, tighter so that I would shorten the, the distance a little bit more. You can see what I mean with these two, for example, where the top one is maybe like six, six centimeters and, and a little bit. And when I measure the bottom one, 
it's like at five and a half. So there clearly is a difference between these two, which shouldn't really happen. So lesson learned, pay attention to the angling of your travel cords. And now let's connect the two sides. So as you can see, what I did down here is I finished the eighth diamond and then continued on this section as if I started another one. And then down here, we will choose one of the cords. It doesn't really matter which one. And with the other, we will make another double half hitch. And this one is a little bit tricky because it's really hard to keep it nice and tight. So something like this. And then usually what I like to do to connect these two sides and, and make some sort of a pattern is do like a couple rows of double half hitches down here. So maybe doing like this one. So leaving these two on the side. Usually that's what I do. Make one row of these and then I'll leave again two on the side and make another row down here. Now that the cords are connected, I can see I definitely didn't do much of a good job of making this side tighter right here. Can you see that excess cord and how it's sort of bulging out? So pay attention to that. This side should be shorter than this side. Now for my next step, I'm going to add the fringe cords to all of these outside cords right here with just a simple, simple Lark's head knot, so that should be fairly easy to do. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights on both sides. I ended up actually doing the reverse Lark's head knot, which you've probably noticed. I've put somewhere three, somewhere four of the, the fringe cords on, you know, that little section. Again, just a sign that I wasn't really precise when making the diamonds because then each piece is a little bit different in, in length. And I've also trimmed it down here and then some of these pieces I've actually used for some of those fringe pieces as well. And you might remember from my last video talking about how I come up with projects that the last part was a lot about me changing my mind and changing the design as I'm working on it. Well, here's a perfect example. As soon as I've put on this braid, which was originally a lot closer to the beads, I felt like it just didn't work that well. I felt like it needed something in between the two sections to separate the colors a little bit. And then when I added this piece, it even became more obvious. Now there is even more space in between. So I definitely want to add another section there. I will be using only these beige or, or sand cords for that one and actually those smaller ones, the, the one and a half millimeter that I used here, just to use them up and I think it might actually look quite good. And the idea is to do these like mm, belts from square knots. So just adding a couple um, cords here and then doing square knots all the way down here where I will then eventually connect them. So let's do that.
both of these belt-like sections are done and now to connect them. If I did just this, you can kind of see that that wouldn't really work. So what I have to do first before I start connecting them down here is twist them. So I'm actually turning both sides inward and then down here, I'll start to make more square knots. So this first square knot is a little bit tricky trying to connect the two sides, making sure it's nice and tight. And then the other side of it. like so. And now I'll continue with the other knots in the row on each side. And then I'll start making a row underneath it. However, I will be leaving out these two additional cords on the side. So we're kind of um, always leaving out in the next row, the next two cords to kind of get it into this sort of a angled shape. So this section is now finished. I will work on the trimming a little bit later. And now for the most fun part of the project that I've been looking forward to the whole time I was making this, which is adding the tassels. Now the plan is to add a tassel into each one of these diamonds and I'm going to change the two colors that I used here. So the, the red and the orange, they're going to switch up in here. So let me show you how I'm going to do those tassels. So first, I cut three of the cords of the color I want. Now because these cords that I'm using are three ply, I'll have to unravel all of them to get those individual strands. And then I'll just kind of put them back together again. Once I get them to a bundle like this, I'll then take my brush and brush out the entire thing. Starting from the bottom always, I can't really show that on camera, I have to do it off camera, but it doesn't have to be perfect, just you know the initial brushing out. So something like this is perfectly fine. Try to hold them tight at the end so that you're not changing too much, you know, like making sure that they are symmetrical, all of them. And so now we can add this to the diamonds. And I'm actually starting at the bottom and then working my way up. I think that will make it easier to add these. And so it's really going to be these two middle strings that are going to be holding it up. So first, one end goes to the back smooth it out and then that same end we will make a hole here in the middle and that same end is going to come forward underneath this other end and then we will do the same thing with the other side except on the other string so first pulling it to the back and then out through the middle down here. And don't worry if it's a little bit messy, that's fine. We are just going to brush it out anyways. are on and trimmed it took me quite some time i don't know why i'm always so much looking forward to making tassels when i know how much work it is but um i don't know i guess maybe it's more that i'm looking forward to once the tassels are on because i do like the look anyways 
Now the last thing to do is to get rid of this hair accessory right here. And instead of that, I'm going to make a gathering knot from the beige quartz and then I will be done. this turned out pretty cool it definitely has lots of complexity to it and i think it definitely deserves the title layered what did you guys think of it i would really want to know let me know down in the comments and i'll see you in the next video that one will be that large scale wall hanging that i keep promising you see you then